Hi, my name's Johnny and today we are taking a look at the top five budget-based brands for beginners. Damn, that's a good title. Seeing as most of my content is focused around the more affordable brands and trying to showcase that actually there's a lot of tone in your hands and that you can make affordable bases sound great, showing that they're punching way above their price points. I thought it would be a good idea to do a bit of a video based around the top five brands that kind of focus on that kind of price range. Now a lot of these names are ones that you often will find in your local music shops. So for the purposes of this list, and out of fairness, I'm not going to include brands like Harley Benton, East Coast, things like that, just because I want to focus on the smaller brands that you get in your local music shops. And I know that looking at the old analytics, that's a lot of the audience watching these videos are from America. So I'm very sorry. I've only got the experience of what is available in the UK market. So that's what we're kind of gonna focus on. Throughout this video, I don't mention a brand that you've owned before and you absolutely loved when you were a kid. Just, just, just maybe hold off on that comment saying, well, you didn't mention the brand that I like and therefore you're wrong and I hate you and your bass playing and your video and your content and your channel and I hate you. Now we've got all of that out of the way, let's crack on with the list. At number five, I'm sure a lot of you will know about this brand already, and it is Encore. Encore first appeared in 1958, and in 1980 they were acquired by JHS, who own loads of different uh, affordable brands. Originally manufacturing in Japan, when owned by JHS, they are moved over to start manufacturing in India. A strange place to be making guitars really not many other places are making them out there so you're normally china indonesia mexico japan now these are really budget instruments that can normally range from 150 pounds but i found them online for just under 100 pounds 110 pounds that kind of price that they are at nowadays now one downside to this encore brand is that they're actually only making p bass copies now and they're only available in three different colors white black sunburst always like rosewood looking fretboards i'm not sure what, exactly what material they're using on there but one thing that did make me laugh is that the website boasts that they have a vintage profile neck vintage profile basically giving an excuse for having a massive baseball bat neck i would love to get one on the channel if you own one or any of these bases on this list comment down below what you think of it do you think it is worth the money in 2020 because that is one important thing to bear in mind in this list actually and why i haven't included brands like carly benton next up is area aria 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 i was calling it area for years and now i know that is aria i think a lot of these brands seem to go way, way back. So Aria started manufacturing in 1964, originally made in Japan until 1988, where their less expensive models were then started to be manufactured in Korea. In 1975, the brand name Aria changed to Aria Pro 2, which is where you'll see a lot of these 80s basses popping up will have that name on the headstock, and they're still continuing to make guitars today. Now, the Aria Pro 2 guitars in the 80s would be made famous by players such as Cliff Burton from Metallica and Duran Duran's John Taylor. I've personally owned a Pro 2 SB1, absolutely beautiful guitar. Whilst it sounded really vintage, it wasn't really my thing at the time, but it was a really cool bass, but it weighed an absolute ton. Now, when I was growing up in school, Aria was a big brand for cheap guitars in school. So those Korean made ones, not the Japanese made ones. These kind of range around 180 pounds. You can get jazz basses and P basses. Pretty, pretty good. Aria is one of those brands where some guitars are worth like 800, over a thousand pounds. And then some are worth under 200, all depending on the country of manufacture. Those of you that were born in the 90s and grew up secondary school or high school guitars are very familiar with Aria. Moving on, next up is a brand that are relatively young in terms of guitar companies, and that is Revelation. These are brought to the UK by German manufacturer Hona Ho 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 maybe in the 90s. And they were sold to retailers to <clears throat> plug a certain hole in stock portfolios. Now looking at their range of products, I can assume that this means it was kind of filling the gap in like jazz masters and all different shapes of guitar because actually their portfolio of products has a really nice range of different styles of guitars, particularly in the guitar, but also the basses as well. 
where you're getting different kind of pickup configurations that you wouldn't normally find. So kind of filling a niche that maybe other affordable brands weren't covering at the time. They also say they represent excellent quality and value for money. Now I've actually owned a jazz bass from Revelation. It was an all natural with a white pit guard and it was great. I used it for recording and it was really, really subby and quite a nice mid scoop to it. And these are priced between two and 300 pounds. They do mainly uh, precision and jazz bass copies with some really interesting pickup configurations. I particularly want to try the double P pickup jazz bass. I think it weirdly looks quite cool and I'd love to hear what that sounds like. All of these guitars range between two and 300 pounds. So next up in the number two spot is SX, or Essex as they're actually called. Essex was born in 1998 and produces guitars out of China. Now with Chinese made guitars, a lot of people think, oh, made in China, it's gonna be really cheap and awful, oh my God. You look at the brand new Squires, like the Paranormal series that are coming out of the factory in China, as opposed to the classic vibes that are made in Indonesia, people are reporting that actually the quality control is better out of those Chinese factories now. But maybe think twice before ruling something out because it is just simply made in China. So on this channel, we had a look at their P-Base copy, which I was really, really impressed with and won my Underdog of the Year award at the Dibleys. As well as different P-Bases, they do jazz basses as well as a Warwick-inspired SB1. Now, depending on the wood of the body, it would appear, whether ash or older, the bases can range from 170 all the way up to 250 pounds, depending on the... depending on the... <laughs> depending on the... <laughs> <laughs> depending on the wood of the body, normally being ash or older. A sleeper brand, which you can actually find quite a lot in the UK that I really enjoy. Lots of brands out there that I have missed. So a reminder, as well as liking this video and subscribing to the channel, leave a comment down below saying what budget brands have a soft spot in your heart. The number one spot for a budget base brand is Rickenbacker, no, <laughs> Vintage, also owned by JHS. These guitars are built in Korea, but designed in the UK. It came about in 1995, starting off being made in Korea, moving over to factories in Vietnam, and now mainly coming out of China. Now, these sit at the top spot because of their really good reputation and quality. You're not really gonna get good bang for your buck with these vintage guitars. Also, I think it's a terrible brand name, <laughs> because if you're looking for a vintage bass, you're either gonna get these affordable guitars or a bass that is cost like 10 grand. <laughs> One really cool thing about Vintage is that they do loads of different types of bass copies. They've got your P basses, jazz basses, stingrays, an SG bass, acoustic basses, and a violin bass as well. I actually owned a vintage Strat, which was distressed like that, and I thought it was done really tastefully. I don't normally like the artificial wear too much. Um, it can sometimes be a bit obvious, but I actually really enjoyed that guitar, and it was fantastic quality, that that Strat. I really, really enjoyed it. I ended up just selling it because I needed, I wanted to get a guitar that was just all in one. I didn't want to be, keep switching between different guitars, even though I do that with all my basses. Had a few comments on this channel asking me to check them out um, and see if they hold up in 2020 because they have got really fond memories of that brand. So definitely one to look at if you're looking at buying your first bass in a shop. So that's it, my top five best budget brands for beginners. Now, of course, like I said, there are others out there. Harley Benton for one, taking the bass world by storm. But like I said before, I'm kind of focusing on the smaller brands that you often find in your cute little rustic music shops in your local town. Uh, hit like on this video, make sure you subscribe, stay tuned for even more bass reviews, list videos such as this, unboxings and all things related to the low end. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time.